So, hello to all of you. And uh, <coughs> I first thank to uh, Omicron for organizing this, uh, for very, very well organizing this event uh, for this nice location. Thanks to you for coming. Thanks to Alex and Christoph for preparing the ground. So, my name is Jörg Reuter from uh, Henix in Switzerland. We are doing 6150 engineering tools, vendor independent engineering tools since uh, 2008. And um, uh, yeah, I think we've seen quite a lot of things uh, evolving and developing. And uh, I want to share some of these experiences with you and give you an, an overview on how we see the things. The picture here is showing what we need to do if we want to build such a 6150 system. Let us start at the top. We have uh, in every utility, in every enterprise, we have uh, asset management and enterprise data. This has nothing to do with engineering, you can say. But uh, if you look in these databases, sometimes they are SIM database, sometimes they are very proprietary database, sometimes it's only paper. There you find names of substations, you find names of feeders, you find designations of circuit breakers, you find sometimes also naming rules of signals. Exactly this stuff. Also, the engineer from the system integrator company who is building up later on a substation, this, he has to use this stuff. So uh, today we do not have really a relationship between the high level uh, master data in the utilities and the low level engineering data which is in the Excel sheets or in the local engineering tools. And the reason why we do not have this is uh, there is no common system, there is no common data model behind. And uh, this makes life not easy. We go to utilities and we find departments which are working on engineering standards. These departments, uh, they work hard, they think a lot on structuring the data, and then they write everything down in Excel, mostly in Excel. Uh, they also have uh, guidelines for doing the drawings and everything. So also there, we have again the same modeling, the same objects, the same elements, and they are written down on, on the paper. Then, based on these engineering standards, the utilities specify a system that they want to buy. If they buy a turnkey, or if they buy it, uh, if they do it themselves, and then the project engineers are starting to implement the system. So uh, they think about uh, what devices they need and uh, how the process looks like. Then they define, based on the engineering standards, uh, <coughs> all the inputs, outputs, uh, the wiring, and naturally they think about uh, the control and protection functions. <coughs> and then the boss comes and says, okay, and now we, we make 6150, and we make it turnkey. So we, we we give this written specification, we give it out. Uh, maybe it's 400 pages for one substation, and there is one sentence, uh, it should be 6150. Okay. Then the 6150 guys, they start to work on the IEDs. So they configure the IEDs to define the, the functions defined in the paper. They make the horizontal communication, the boost messages that Christoph has presented. They make the vertical communication to uh, send the data to the network control center or to the, to the HMI. And they have to follow all this paperwork that they, that they see here. But at the end, this 6150 focus here just on the communication configuration has nothing to do directly with what comes here. It is the same, the same data, the same content, but formal, for, on a formal point, it is not the same. So um, they have to do the translation, and they do it every time. And every engineering team does it in a different way. So if the utility runs this classical process like this on paper, they get different solution, even for similar substations. And then they have to maintain these solutions. So this is the, the way of doing the IEDs. When the vertical communication is, def is defined, so the data which is going up, then all this data has also to be taken and engineered into these systems. 
Uh, and here we are talking about different protocols uh, and uh, about the configuration of the HMI. So and the red line here is indicating that uh, yeah, a very long time we had 650 systems limited to this work here and this part here was not so much related. Christoph has presented the structured data in 650. We saw the <coughs> common data classes, we saw the position uh, uh, data object and all the structures. At the end, when we come here on this level, we have a flat signal list, we have an, an, an address, and we have to do a mapping on this. So all the engineering that is done on this level is on a flat signal list, very well represented in Excel very often, but here we have the structured data from uh, with all the semantics. So also this is a, is a it is, it is not seamless. And uh, I think most of the 650 systems that have been done in the past, they really suffer a little bit from this situation. But they <coughs> are not, uh, yeah, that, that, that's not, that, that must not, not remain like this. Alex, Alex has talked about change, and I think here 650 gives us a big opportunity for change. If you understand how we can use 650, to cover the entire process. You see this uh, funny twisting slide change, the exciting slide change. Uh, i do it again. Yep. <laughs> yep. So um, that is exciting because 650 engineering is exciting. That's one reason why I put it in. The other reason is if you fall asleep, I can always give you a wake-up kick with the next slide. So you see the same picture again <coughs> with all the processes, but uh, I took away the red, the red cross which limits 650 to the pure communication engineering. So here I show the structures that we find in SCL, the structure of the 6150 data model. And if you have a closer look in all the data that is used here, then we see that we find everything. But here in this world, the data is well defined, it is standardized, it has a standardized representation, and that is a huge opportunity. And uh, later we will have a presentation about uh, uh, engineering of, of Gateway and SCADA, and there we will see that meanwhile uh, a lot has, has happened to overcome the, 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 the limits that we had at the beginning. And, uh, the message that I want to give to you is to show how this entire process can be done using the modeling and the means of 6150. Christoph has talked about it. 6150 defines different kinds of tools. We have on the left side here a tool family that we call IED configuration tool. <coughs> These are tools which are specific to a specific IED or to a manufacturer. So whenever you buy an IED, you have an IED configuration tool which is responsible to set up this box. On the other side, the standard defines something which is called an SCT, a system configuration tool. This system configuration tool knows nothing about the particularities of an IED or of a, of a vendor. But it knows quite well all the data model which is behind 61850. And this system configuration tool has two aspects or two parts. Um, I want to name them, uh, or, yeah, there's two parts of the tool. One is the system specification tool. The other is the system integration tool. Now these tools, they need to exchange data. And uh, that is uh, now the point where the substation configuration language, or the system configuration language, enters into the game. So we have uh, SCL files, XML-based dialect, which is used to exchange data between tools. So very often the people say, oh, here I have an SCD, a system configuration description, that is the, the only truth for the substation. Yes, it contains, or it should contain, the entire communication-related information. But at the end, SCL 
is not a database for a substation, it is a dialect to exchange information between tools. And what information is exchanged does not depend so much on what SCL file we have. So we will see different files, uh, ICD, IID, CID, SCD, SSD, SAD, ESD. Uh, so if you see this, all, all these different kinds of files, um, they are not so much uh, characterized by the content, they are characterized by the point in the engineering process where they are used. So we will have a little bit closer look later on on this, uh, on this SCL, substation, the system configuration language. Here the interoperability is shown again. The difference between the slide before, here we have several IED configuration tools. So let's assume we have a multi-vendor system, uh, 80 IEDs, and this 80 IEDs from six or seven different vendors. Each of these IEDs uh, will have its own configuration tool, at least one for each vendor. But we can have one system specification tool and one system integration tool for the entire system. Today, the vendors also offer naturally system specification and system integration tools. Sometimes it's even hard to distinguish uh, if you take a tool from a vendor, what now is the ID tool, what is the system tool, and what is the integration tool. But basically, all the vendors are offering these, and uh, if you make a single vendor system, it is quite a good solution to use the tools of this one vendor, because then you know that uh, the devices are well supported. If you make a multi-vendor system, then uh, maybe it makes sense to think about what to use here. So, <clears throat> the nice thing with SCL is that tools from different vendors can exchange the engineering data because this is standardized. <laughs> and uh, this gives the opportunity that vendor-independent tools can be used for the engineering. Uh, why, why is the idea to have vendor-independent tools? Um, it's not so much the idea that the tool must be independent from the vendor, the tool must be independent from any supplier. A tool which is based on SCL can be exchanged by another tool because the data is in SCL and each tool which is able to work with SCL can work with this data. So it is important that you keep as a utility your assets, how to configure a protection scheme, how to configure your communication, how to make your control, that these assets are stored in SCL and not in any proprietary format. Then you can use different tools. So we have seen this picture again, uh, already with, with Christoph. The content of each of these SCL files is always, we see, we find the four parts here. So we have a substation part, which describes our, our process. We have uh, an ID part, where we have the IDs which are in uh, this, this file. We have the data type <coughs> that Christoph has presented. And we have the communication section, which tells us how uh, the IEDs are connected to the network. And this structure, or these this sections, we find in every SCL file independent what file it is. But naturally, if you have a specification file, then the substation section shows us what we want as a utility. So we define the names, the structure, the, the feeders, uh, the circuit breakers, the logical nodes, everything. We find this as specification. When the system integrator delivers an SCL file and we have a look in the same section of the file, then we find the S-built information. So we find what he has created, what he has made out of it. So these are just three examples of uh, the SCL files. We have seen already there are IED capability descriptions where we see in terms of 61850 what an IED is capable of. We have a system specification description as an input to the process, and we have uh, the system configuration description, the SCD, which is uh, the complete description of how the system is configured. 
So finally, the goal of the engineering is to produce such an SCD file based on the specification by using the uh, capabilities of the IED. The process, how we do this, you can see the overview here. At the end, we need to produce for each box, for each IED in our system, we produce, need to produce a configuration file. <coughs> 650 is uh, very often called the CID file, and this file is produced with the IED configuration tool. Now, most of the people that have done 650 stations, they have just used this part. So putting all the IEDs on the table, fiddling everything together, making a configuration file for each IED, and uh, setting up the communication in, in this way. This works very well if you have uh, just three IEDs and you make a, a small demo project. If you have 80 IEDs and you just work this bottom up, so I call it sometimes the, the guerrilla engineering with the CID files. So if you work this way with 80 IEDs, then you have to configure the entire system by one by one by making sending and subscribing just on this level. And the only way to get a little bit uh, quality or a systematical uh, way of through this is that you have very clever Excel sheets which manage all this data for you. And that is why uh, the 6150 goes a little bit farther uh, and defines the top-down process where you do not have the work doing for each IED, where you have a system view. You do once for the entire system, the specification. You have a formalized way how the system is described and based on this you build up the system and you do this one single time for one system. When you are done, you have one description file that describes your system and the basis you take the ICD files, which gives you the, the inputs for it. So how does this uh, system specification look like? First we need the process, we need our substation, we need our single line. So generally, uh, a system specification tool should allow you to draw the single line diagram and uh, the tool should create the SSD file. Based on the single line diagram, you can allocate functions, also define uh, some communications, so that uh, you get a complete specification of your system. <coughs> the nice thing is, if you are doing this, then you have already, from a, as a utility, you make the specification, but then with this you do already a lot of design decisions. So the entire namings, uh, the entire structures of the, of the names, your data model, everything is defined, so if you do this, then you will get similar solutions for similar substations. So you can impose design decisions to the system integrator, which is important for maintenance later on. So the content of such a system specification description, naturally this is the substation section, it optionally can contain all the data types that you require Christoph has presented the 6x50 data model where you have for circuit breaker position, where you have for protection function, the, the drip with all its details. Here uh, you can define as a utility the data that you want. So it's a kind of standardized signal list. You can even make an allocation of virtual IEDs. So you say I have a first main protection, uh, I have a back control unit, and you can allocate your functionalities in a formalized way. And we do not always have a green field. If uh, the substation automation system is already existing and you just are extending it with an additional bay, then in this case, the system specification description may contain a big part of an already engineered substation which gives to the system integrator all the information he needs to integrate a new bay into the existing system. So an SSD file can be quite complete if we talk about maintenance. So then we have the system 
specification ready and the system integrator starts his work. He can look at uh, the capabilities of the IEDs, uh, he can look at the specification and based on this he needs to implement our substation automation and control system and uh, the first step what he is doing, he creates instances of the IEDs. The ICD files, they are templates, they define uh, the behavior or the data model of a family or a type of IED. Based on these templates, we create 80 IEDs into in our system. We assign all these IEDs to the process so that it is clear which of the XCBR logical nodes belongs to which bay to which circuit breaker. We put everything together to a network, then we configure the communication and at, at the end we create the SCD file. The SCD file contains from a system point of view all the engineering work that we have done in these steps. So the instantiation of the IEDs can also be, depending on what kind of process we are doing, quite, um, yeah, can go different ways. So uh, the ID configuration tool gives us the template file and from this we create uh, IEDs of a certain type in our system. But maybe we have already an existing system with configured IEDs so there we can also take an SCL file of an existing IED which is already running in the system and include it in our system. Or we can even have uh, an SCD file which describes a part of an existing system and also this we include and create one, uh, yeah, one entire system with all the information. <laughs> The IEDs, they are connected to the subnet and uh, in 61850 we call this connection uh, or in, in, the, in the configuration language we call this uh, connected access points. Uh, this uh, is uh, necessary because uh, IEDs can have more than one Ethernet address or more than one uh, Ethernet connection and uh, using the connected access points we can uh, connect uh, one IED with several addresses to one network. So at, at the end, when everything is instantiated, we need to configure the, the communication. Now, SCL describes in a very nice way how to uh, set up reports, um, goose messages, sampled values, but um, also there, we have differences between vendors. These differences have been a problem in Edition 1. In Edition 2, <coughs> things are much clarified. Now with Edition 2, we have a situation that a system tool is able to create these configurations automatically just based on the specification. So as a, as a protection engineer, I'm interested in saying I have from my bay number three the <laughs> overcurrent protection which produces a trip. And this trip I want to use to block in a, an incoming bay another protection function. If I name it in this way, no IED, no, no ID specific information is related to this. It's only application information. This application information can be expressed in 61850 and Based on this information, a system tool is able to create all this configuration information. That at the end means you will be able as a utility to define in a device independent way your protection schemes, your communication requirements, put this in a library. Based on this library you can create a project and the tool is able to create for different kinds of IEDs out of this library information, the detailed configuration here. And uh, if you do it like this, then you save a lot, a lot of configuration work. Testing will be much easier because you get automatically created uh, data sets, reports, and uh, goose control blocks. And uh, 
this will give another boost in efficiency. And that is the point where we are today uh, with addition two. So just to summarize, what happens if we are creating an SCD file? We have our specification. We have instance, instances of the IEDs. We bring everything together. We merge the IEDs together so that all the IEDs end up in the final SCD file. Each IED or all the logical nodes in the IED are connected to the corresponding elements in our uh, specification. So that is how we create the s build information in the substation part. Then from each IED we have the data types that Christoph has presented. These data types, they need to be merged together so that they are a consistent set of data types in our final SCD file. We need to uh, do all the network configuration, and at the end, we need to do all the communication configuration. And that is how the system tool creates the STD file. Once the STD file is done, then the IED tools of the different vendors extract everything they need to set up one box after the other. And again, here we see the big difference. Without the STD file, you do for a set of 50 or 100 IEDs in one project, all the communication configuration one by one with the complexity of managing everything, uh, yeah, everything in, in uh, the complexity of the entire system by configuring uh, box by box. With the STD file, you have a system-wide view, which is based even on standards and libraries, and it is more or less a push button to do the final configuration files based on the consistent configuration description. And when you have some routine in working in this way, then you can create in a standardized way supported by SCL your signal list, bay templates, function templates, things like interlocking schemes. You can even incorporate pre-configured IEDs, ICD data models that in a frame agreement you have negotiated with the supplier. And uh, uh, in this way, it is just really plug and play based on the right libraries. And you can use the entire structure also to add document, uh, a piece of documentation uh, according to your, to your functions and uh, to your signals into a consistent uh, uh, final documentation of your system. This uh, looks a little bit like future, but um, you are here two other days and uh, we will have some workshops and uh, that is an opportunity to experience this. <laughs>